Let's talk about selecting elements, which is of course extremely important because that's basically what you do with the CSS Hero plugin. You click on an element that you want to make changes to, and then you apply those changes. But how you choose your elements to target uh, is going to be very, very, very important. And why? Well, because sometimes you may want to target one very specific element and other times you may want to target a set of elements belonging to the same class. As an example, take a look at my menu items. I've got five of them. Now, if I clicked on any one of them and I went to typography and I decided to change the font size, notice that all of them are changing in the font size as well because they all belong to the same class. This is standard. But what if for one reason or the other, I wanted to target one of them specifically? How would I do this? Well, let's say I wanted to change the color of pricing. I can right click on pricing and now you would see the option of only this element. So I'm gonna click in there and now I can change the color to let's say our red and there you go. Now pricing is the only menu item with the color of red. This is exactly how you can target elements or targets very specific elements that uh, might belong to uh, a particular class shared by other elements. Likewise, you could also make design changes on specific pages. Let me just undo all of this and go back to the default. All right. What if for one reason or that we wanted to change the font size of our menu item specifically on the home page, but leave it at the default on other pages? How are we going to do this? Well, very, very similar. I'm going to right click on any one of the menu items. And now I'm going to click on only on this page. I'm going to click in there. And now let's change the font size here to 24 pixels. And there you go. Now I'm going to switch over to the navigate option. So notice this is the home page. The menu items are 24 pixels. But if I go to the services page, you would notice that the menu items have now gone back to the default size, which is about 14 or 15 pixels. And if I go back to the home page once again, the font, the font size goes back to 24 pixels. So this is exactly how you can make design changes to your elements on specific pages. You also have the option of targeting elements on specific page templates as well. So this is very, very useful if you're using page builders like maybe uh, DV or Elementor or Beaver Builder. You have your set of page templates and you wanted to apply those design changes specifically on those templates then you can choose uh, this option. It works very, very similar to the uh, only on this page uh, function. Another way of selecting your elements is by using the selectors tree, which you would find either in your project section or down here in the footer. As an example, if I clicked on the who we are heading, notice that instantly we now have access to all these selectors down here. What this does is this will give you a breakdown of the hierarchical structure from top to bottom. So starting from the left, we have like the big dawn, like the big container at the very top, which is of course body. And then all the way down here to the right, notice that the very final selector right here is the actual selector that controls the who we are text. Now notice that if I begin moving from right to left, uh, this is the second selector right here. This is the selector that controls the block displaying the who we are text. Now we have the actual block itself. I move further to the left. Now we have the our column holding the who we are heading as well as the text below it and then the meet our team button. I move further to the left. Now you can see we're targeting the actual row containing both columns on the left and on the right. Uh, I move further again to the left. Now you're taking a look at the entire section itself and so on and so forth. So once again, this gives you the breakdown of the hierarchical structure from the parent content at the content at the very top down to the final selector that, or the final element that you're actually trying to target. A different way of looking at this would be to go to the project and then you click on selectors tree 
and then not right here you now have access to the exact same structure but it's now been displayed uh, vertically so maybe this might be uh, better for you it all depends but once again you can see body at the very top that's like the big 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 container and then it goes all the way down here uh, to the final block. Now, one thing to mention, though, is that if you wanted to make a change to a different section in your page, in this case, for example, maybe the footer area. Now, if I clicked on, let's say, the message box, for example, uh, down here in the footer, you will see the selectors highlighted for you. However, for the selectors tree on the right, what you want to do is you want to close it and then go back to project, click on selectors tree once again, and now you will now have access to the uh, hierarchical structure of the area that you're currently trying to uh, edit. So once again, uh, up here, you will see the selector for the form. You keep going higher and higher and you start seeing the actual selectors controlling the main areas of your footer uh, and so on and so forth. Now, in the very real occasion when you're trying to select an element and you discover that CSS Hero cannot directly intercept that element, you can choose to add a custom selector. Now, this can happen in situations where maybe you're using a particular kind of theme or a plugin that maybe has one or two issues and you discover that you can't quite click on an element and just simply uh, style it. This is where adding a custom selector would be would be ideal. Now, in my case, I don't have such an issue, but let's just assume I had an issue trying to, let's say, make a change to Esteban Cole, the text right here, right? You can see I can click on Esteban Cole and immediately you can see I have all the selectors right here on the left. I have no issues. But let's assume that I did have that issue. Let's assume that CSS Hero cannot directly intercept this particular element and provide its selectors. What I can do is to right click right there and now you would see add selector. I'm gonna click in there. And of course, CSS Hero has no issues <laughs> generating the selectors for me right here. But in your own particular case, if you discover that, you know what? I don't see anything in here you can simply type in whatever name for the selector you want to add. It could be maybe an ID, like maybe a special uh, text, or you could even make it a class special uh, text. You can name it whatever you want to name it, and then just simply click on Add. And now you've created a custom selector. If I want to make use of that selector, what, what I can do right now is to go to Project, click on the Selectors tree, and then right here, right now, you can see I do have the custom selector that I've just added. I can click in there. And then from here, I can begin to make whatever changes I want to make to Esteban Cole, change the color, change the liner, change whatever I want to change. So that's how you can make use of your custom selectors. So this has been a lesson on how to use CSS Hero to select your elements. Thank you for watching.